Hello and welcome back to ERU where we round up the biggest results and talking points from across European football. Joining me this morning, it's Henry Hill. Henry, how are you? Yes, very well, thank you. I won £10 off Joe Tomlinson in a bet this weekend because he, oh, he, nice. was, he was adamant that uh, United would roll over Liverpool. <laughs> I actually wow. think I actually think that's the easiest ten pounds I've ever made. I'm not even being funny, <laughs> uh, but he's he's taken a lot of money away from me over the over the years in betting. So yeah, no, it don't I mean don't encourage it. But yeah, it was quite it, to get one over Joe Tomlinson is always a great feeling. But anyway, how are you, Deeks? What did you get up to this weekend? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I had a more successful weekend than Joe. I went to a friend's for dinner on Friday night, and then my mum was down, so hung out with my niece quite a lot, and then watched uh, yeah watched Inter Milan Juventus yesterday and. Uh, that crazy game at Old Trafford as well. What a game that was, which I'm sure they'll cover over on Winners and Losers on Football Daily, of course. Uh, Henry, you said you caught Le Classique last oh my night. goodness. I have to say, it's the best and the worst of French fan culture. Like, when they came out onto the pitch, the emblem they created, the and then the TIFO of the flares. Apparently, it was Messi's first ever game against Marseille, which is quite cool. Um, so, really? oh yeah, certainly one that he remembers. But then beyond that, in the corner, some of the fan trouble, sort of pelting Neymar and stuff whenever he had a, um, going to take a corner kick or anything like that. There was, there was even a point where Messi was breaking through towards the goal and a streaker just ran onto the pitch and ran straight up to him. I saw that on Twitter. Yeah, it was just it was just wild. I, I mean, I, the, the commentators said it. Eventually, they're just going to ban fans from the stadiums and that's going to be that. So mm. it's, it's bizarre. But And it ruined what was otherwise quite an intriguing affair. Marseille probably should have won. Probably should have won. Yeah, it's easy for us over in England to be like, oh, the French football culture oh, yeah. is completely out of control. But we obviously had that shocker during the Euros final. Our fans aren't much better at times. But of course. yeah, let us know in the comments below if you'd like us to see, uh, like us to cover uh, the French football fan culture, what's going wrong uh, in, in a future, maybe an explained video. Let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, let's move on to our story of the week and kick off this week's show. And it's Victor Osserman. It's all about Victor Osserman, our story of the week, because he is a man in demand. What's going on with this one, Henry? Oh, this guy's a beast. Absolutely love him. He is, he's wanted by a number of clubs. Not a surprise either. So far, nine goals in 11 league and Europa League games this season. He's, been, uh, he's leading this Napoli charge for an unlikely Scudetto, which we'd all absolutely love to see, mm -hmm. I think, in principle. But he, I mean, bear in mind, he was fairly injured last season. He, he, he's really come to life since that big money move from France and yeah as a result uh, a lot of people are taking notice of him you know Manchester City and Manchester United are both interested in bringing the 22 year old to the Premier League I've also reading that Real Madrid are interested in him at the moment although I think obviously Mbappe is going to be the priority but what is more interesting I think out of the um, selections is Bayern Munich are said to be lining up a hundred million euro offer uh, for him as they look to make a sort of replacement for Robert Lewandowski and I was thinking that's a lot of money but then you have to remember they got Lewandowski for free <laughs> so, mm, true. yeah I mean, it's, it's one of the all-time amazing free transfers if you look at sort of how much that's been repaid so 100 million euros for a 22 year old who really does look like the complete package he really um, he's got everything pace power finesse in the box his shot conversion rate isn't great but he, so many efforts unlucky not to get the winner this weekend as well he can head yeah offside he's he's he i, I genuinely watch him i think this guy is absolutely fantastic he's what arsenal should have spent their money on <laughs> instead of going for pepe <laughs> uh but yeah he i mean they paid napoli paid a little 70 million euros for him uh so even to get a sort of profit on that is a remarkable return but obviously they won't want him to leave um they'll want him to stick around for a while but i mean dukes where would you like to see him go most where, where would suit him best yeah, well, it's going to be really difficult to get him, as you say. He's still got four years remaining on that deal, but he's clearly an immensely talented player, as you've so well described. Um, he's done very well to recover from that injury-ridden first season at Napoli, obviously missed 23 games last year. His future, though, is likely to be tied to the future of Erling Haaland. Now, the Norwegian is almost definitely going to move next summer, and whoever doesn't manage to land him, and you think all the clubs we've mentioned will also be going for Erling Haaland. Even Real Madrid, there's speculation that they will go for Haaland <laughs> and Mbappe, wow. with Mbappe likely to land to sign on a free. So whoever doesn't land Haaland, Osman's probably going to be right in the top two or three names as the sort of backup option. Uh, and as you say, very good all-round striker, good shot numbers, 3.3 shots per 90 this term, 0.6 key passes and two dribbles per 90, which is an exceptional for a number nine. Uh, his XG stands at 0.67 per 90, which isn't Lewandowski, Horden levels just yet, 
but it's the third consecutive year of it being above 0.6 and at 22 he's got plenty of room for uh, improvement as well and as you say that goal that was ruled out against Roma yesterday so good in the air as well he's got a phenomenal spring and he looks really comfortable in wide open spaces I think he'd be a slightly strange fit fit for Man City in particular because he doesn't really play that sort of style at Napoli and he's rarely involved in build-up play. He completes just 13 passes per game and he seems best, as I say, when he's attacking sort of wide open spaces, lethal on the counter-attack and when he's got a bit of space to work inside the box as well. But maybe I'm doing him a disservice as well. I'm sure he'd be able to adapt to it because he's taken everything in his stride so far. Having moved for an enormous amount of money from Lille and having not played at Lille for very long yeah. uh, prior to being at Wolfsburg and Charleroi and, and clubs like that. So... He's, he's really gone on a superstar trajectory over the last few years. If Real couldn't sign Mbappe for whatever reason, I think he'd be a nice fit at Real Madrid. His pace a lot up front alongside Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. over the next five, six years could be really, really exciting. United, I think, seems like the strangest fit. They've obviously already got Ronaldo, probably a mistake in retrospect. Cavani and Mason Greenwood, who needs to start playing as a number nine regularly. I think he's the future yeah, in that position. The only downside in terms of Osman, he would be incredibly expensive, but for Napoli to be able to make a profit on a player they spent 70 million euros, rising to 80 million euros in two years, just goes to show the sort of level that this guy is operating at. And I don't think it's crazy to spend 100 million euros on him, given the way he's developing right now. Personally, I'm kind of with you. If he can't go to Real Madrid, which seems like it's unlikely to happen with them target targeting Mbappe and Holland, I'd actually love to see him at Bayern Munich. I think he'd be an excellent fit there. Uh, and with Chupa Moting over, over the hill as well um, and, and Lewandowski likely to move as well um, I think there's a, a definite fit for him and he'd be a perfect addition there uh, and he can just develop nicely alongside Nabri, Sane, Musiala etc so we want Osman to go to Bayern Munich personally guys but where do you guys think he should go and where do you think he will go they could be two different questions let us know in the comments down below and let's move on to our result of the week for our result of the week, we're over in France and well done everyone who recommended this game because what a comeback. It was Nice 3, uh, Lyon 2. Uh, so we've, thank you, sort of, Ferrangi Football at uh, Dukes. Talk us through this game because what a wild 10 minutes of football. Yeah, it was absolutely nuts. And there were quite a few big results in, in Europe this weekend. Not necessarily in the games we expected. I thought El Clasico was a little bit dry, maybe. Derby d'Italia wasn't a thrilling affair. And as we've already mentioned, Le Classique sort of failed to catch a light on the pitch at least. But we could have chosen Verona's 4-1 victory over Lazio, well done to them. Milan's thumping 4-2 victory over Bologna, or Ajax's 5-0 thrashing of PSV. Wow. What a statement that is. They've now scored 37 goals in 10 league games this term. Ajax, incredible. But instead, we wanted to talk about Nice's remarkable 3-2 victory over Lyon. With all three of their goals coming in the final 10 minutes through a towel, Andy Delort and Guisson. Les Gons were 2-0 up through goals from Akambi. That was his sixth in eight games versus Nice and Awa before Atal scored a beautiful yeah. goal, cutting in past Boateng. What a lovely finish that was. Four minutes later, Cadawere was then sent off for a disgraceful <laughs> foul, really. A two-footed lunge off the ground, rightly sent off. Uh, and four minutes after that, Emerson then got nutmegged and brought down Atal in the penalty box. Delort converted emphatically. And in the 92nd minute, Evan Guissant, a 20-year-old academy graduate who had only played 99 minutes of action for Nice across seven substitute appearances, netted his first Ligue 1 goal. What a story for him. He then ripped off his shirt oh, and he God. looked like bloody Hulk, really. <laughs> he looked like Achilles from the film Troy. Uh, I think he's going to be quite a player. If he matches his physique with footballing ability, wow, Ooh. Guissant, one to watch. Incredible turnaround. I'm getting a little bit hot under the collar even remembering it, to be honest. Uh, and, if, and as the scoreline suggests, it was a very even affair. Gautier's men had 17 shots with 7 on target to Leon's 13 and 8. XG had it at 2 to 1.4 in Nice's favour. Les Aiglons have started the season well under 2020-21's title-winning manager Christophe Gautier. They've got 6 wins from 10 games. They sit 3rd. They're 2 points behind Lyon with a game in hand. And no one has conceded fewer than their seven league goals, which is pretty impressive considering they conceded two in this game versus Lyon. So well done, Nice. Well done, Christophe Gautier. But Henry, what does this mean for Lyon? Yeah, I mean, just on that, I loved Gautier dropping to his knees, giving it the old double gun salute sort of in the yeah. end of victory at the end. But I mean, it is it is pretty wild for Lyon. You never know. This is actually almost exactly what we expected under Peter Bosch, isn't it? 
uh, in the dugout there. They play a really beautiful sort of attacking brand of football, but their defence is a little bit sceptical. I mean, this is the eighth time in 14 league and in Europa League games this season. They've scored at least two, but they've conceded three goals on three occasions as well. I mean, they've had a really high scoring week, haven't they? Sort of a very impressive 2-0 win over Monaco last weekend. But then 4-3 versus Slavia Prague, a bit of a thriller over in the Czech Republic. And then obviously this 3-2 defeat. And what that means is only PSG, Lons and Nice, Lons by the way, keeping up this unlikely title challenge. They have scored more than their 18 league goals, but only six sides have conceded more than their 16. So as we say, so great going forward, a bit sceptical at the back. They're third for shots per game, but second for shots against behind Lorient. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but if we look at their side, there are men, many of positives, uh, many positives running through that team. Paqueta, I saw do you, you um, bigging him up on Twitter recently. He looks like he's really found yeah. his feet once more. He was excellent again, playing as a false nine. Um, and also a combi as well. I was wrong about a combi um, at one point in time. Uh, I, I sort of doubted him, but he's actually looked really impressive for Lyon since moving there on a permanent fee from Villarreal. But Paqueta, he got one tackle, one dribble, three key passes, uh, four shots and one assist. So he's averaging a goal contribution every 118 minutes this term. It looks like they're going to lose Awa at, one, at some point, but with Paqueta, they've got a sort of um, ready-made replacement, really, don't they, to sort of step up into that creative role. But then for Nice, uh, Dante was excellent at the back, still going strong. Five tackles and interceptions, 90% pass accuracy. You love to see it, sort of one aerial duel, two shots as well. 38 years old, he's sort of quite an iconic looking player, isn't he? So fair play to Dante. <laughs> but man of the match was probably Kefren Turam. That's uh, the son of Lilian, the great Lilian Turam, the brother of Marcus. So finally, uh, Kefren making his sort of big step up into the limelight. Yeah, he plays in the midfield for Nice. He got three tackles and interceptions, two aerial duels, Three dribbles, three key passes. What we're seeing here, an all-action display from the next great Charam. Clearly, um, Charam sensation. He's been he's been superb all season. I've had ne have had Nice actually into the top four, um, into, into the third place in league. And it looks like their decision to go for Gautier is all coming together. Lyon are now ninth, twelve points off PSG. Um, only three behind Nice in third. For them, surely just getting Champions League football's priority this season. But in order to do that, they need to sort out their defence. But Dukes, Nice, this looks like it could be a really massive season for them. Champions League football will be unbelievable, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be a hell of an achievement. After a few sort of years kind of muddling along a little bit, I uh, remember Claude Puel did a pretty good stint there. Patrick Vieira was up and down. Um, but yeah, Kefren Turan, what an exciting player as well. I mean, what... Is going on with Lillian Turan's genetics. <laughs> yeah. Just incredible. Um, so, fair play. Um, but yeah, big up Kefren. After a, a difficult year so far for Marcus, it looks like Kefren Turan, also one of the the, the, the Turans to watch, maybe, this Turans year. To watch. Um, but yeah, massive credit to, to Nice in this game. I thought they were dead and buried at one stage, but yeah, getting back to 2-1, and then that red card, which was a disgraceful challenge. Don't want to see that at all on the football pitch. But um, yeah, good work from Nice. Love that. All right, let's move on to our star of the week. Okay, it's time for Star of the Week. Yes, and it came in from J Chavez underscore seven, and it was David Alaba. Oof. Yeah, as I said, not necessarily the most entertaining game, but why did we give it to David Alaba, Henry? Well, I think this was probably his most defining moment in a Real Madrid shirt so far. But anyway, let's just look at some of the other contenders. We could have given it to Jude Bellingham. I mean, what a goal. I love this guy. Love that guy. Love the celebration. Uh, as well, absolutely superb. Giovanni Simeone, he scored four goals against Lazio. Normally that would get you into our star of the week. <laughs> but unfortunately... Not this week. Not, not this week. Unfortunately, it goes to Alaba. He scored a wonderful goal uh, from the edge of the area after winning the ball on the edge of his own box, running 80 yards to light up an otherwise fairly tepid sort of El Clasco. I was, I was kind of shocked when I saw him... Uh, in the box but he lined up an absolute what beautiful finish uh, nothing Ter Stegen could do Ter Stegen's actually been massively impressive this season as well yeah amazing goal from Alaba showing just how versatile a player he is once more I mean he's been brilliant since arriving from Bayern Munich on a free transfer this summer I mean, he ranks fourth in the squad for chances created which is kind of nuts when you consider he's played most of his time in defence third for passes into the final third he's completing 2.5 tackles and interceptions per 90 I think he's he was obviously going to be a big player anyway going into that side, but with all the kind of the way that Ramos left, he's suddenly become such an important figure in that back line, obviously playing alongside Militao. He looks to have eleva elevated his game as well next to the Austrian, and uh, it's no surprising to see his passing numbers as high as they are. That's exactly what we saw from him 
at Bayern Munich for all those years and uh, his, his importance in this game was massive too in what is turning out to be a really exciting La Liga title race at the top so far a lot of teams in and around it at the moment all the way down to Osasuna on 18 points because Real Madrid are now second in La Liga one point behind Real Sociedad who blew a two goal lead at Atletico to draw 2-2 two, two. they're also level with Sevilla who beat Levante 5-3 uh, so it's yeah, so a very exciting game, but crucially, they're five points clear of Barcelona. Um, I mean, Dukes, it wasn't like this game wasn't a disaster for Barca in terms of on the pitch and how they played. However, it hasn't gone that way with the fans, has it? Yeah, no, they they really weren't happy at all. Attacking Coman's car as he tried to leave, really don't like to see that in any ground, no matter how unhappy you are with the manager. Like away from the pitch you can you know even booing in a stadium I think sometimes goes too far but don't attack him after the game when he's trying to leave I just don't think that's yeah. being a proper fan to be totally honest and and Barcelona in this game were pretty good in the defensive third the middle third but it's just in that final third once again that they're just not taking their opportunities and not nearly effective enough they had 52% possession they created 12 opportunities but as usual they just weren't clinical enough they only got two on target and created 1.6 xg which was level with Real Madrid but just didn't take their chances. And they'll be very frustrated with the second goal. PK went down, appealing for a penalty, sort of, you know, was rolling around complaining. And Real countered quickly. Asensio's shot was then palmed into the path of Vasquez and he made it 2-0. And then four minutes later, Aguero bagged his first goal for the club from a desk cross. So you like to think, mm. you know, if they defended that Asensio counter-attack better, maybe it could have got a, a draw, uh, which given the current state of the club would be a pretty good result against Real Madrid. Uh, Serginio Dest, who got that assist for the Aguero goal, also missed a glorious opportunity in the first half. Uh, once again, just not showing enough killer instinct in the opposition box. And Barca have now lost four consecutive El Clasicos, three of them with Coman in charge, oh becoming the first manager to do so in 85 years. And as I said, that is not good enough. Barcelona are in a bit of a state, as we all know this season. I don't really know what they were expecting from this game, to be totally honest. But just don't attack him. Uh, and it, it was just completely not what you like to see. I mean, Henry, are you in agreement with that? Well, absolutely. But I, I, I still think there's enough quality in this squad um, to be performing better than they are. I still think they've got decent enough, well, maybe in defence is where they're lacking a little bit. But certainly going forward, they are, I'm, I do think they have to look at these games and think they can do something. I mean, the, the, They've got millions, hundreds of millions of pounds of talent still running through that squad. But I mean, so I mean, l listen, Kerman's not going to be there forever. But attacking his car is just absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with that at all. But yeah, I sort of differ slightly. I, I do think Barcelona are right to expect a little bit more from their squad. Fair enough. Barcelona fans, where do you stand on this? Where do you stand on Koeman? Where do you think you are going? You know, a lot of promising young talent. Is it wasted under Koeman? I mean, he's used a lot of it you know, and, and giving them a lot of minutes this this term, but are you just a bit like Man United treading water right now, just <laughs> wasting time effectively? Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. And that's all we've got time for on ERU for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show as usual. Henry, if they want to watch more Football Daily content, what do you recommend they watch? Oh, well, they should stay on Euro Football Daily, I think. Go check out our Continental Club this week. We looked at underrated signings in Europe. We covered a whole vast array of teams. Real good show, really enjoyed it, so go check that out. Nice. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Remember to like the video, subscribe to EuroFootball Daily, and turn notifications on to never miss a video. We'll catch you next time. Bye!